Hey, all the way with Alloway here with the director, jo Jordan Vote roberts of Toys House. Hey, Jordan, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So uh, his movie premiered last night at Sundance to a riotous crowd, um, but everyone out there hasn't seen it yet. So tell us a little bit about Toys House. Toys House is a uh, dark coming-of-age story about three teenage boys who run away into the woods and build a house. Uh, that's kind of what it's about on a macro scale, but it's it's sort of like a... Um, it's sort of like a throwback to something like Stand By Me mm -hmm. um, with really funny, weird elements. So, mm -hmm. But it's, it's just ultimately about like saying, hey, being 14 was the greatest and also <laughs> the worst time of your life. So. <laughs> exactly. And um, so this is your first feature film, Successful Alcoholics, which I love. Thank Did you. really well at Sundance 2010, was yeah. it? Um, so you got the script by Chris Galetta mm -hmm. and you were saying in the Q&A that you're like, you read it and you were so surprised it hadn't, no one had picked it up yet. So so, for your first feature, what drew you to say, I'm making this movie? When the script got sent to me, I thought it was a joke. I'm like, I'm <laughs> I couldn't believe that somebody wasn't attached to it. Um, I'd made that short, and I'd been looking to make my first feature, and I didn't want to just make a feature for the sake of making a feature. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted something that I cared about and responded to and all of that. And uh, the script was just so unique and heartfelt, and it did just, like I said, have sort of that throwback feel. Mm -hmm. It was just mm -hmm. this very weird combination of very classic themes meeting like a very contemporary um, style of comedy mm -hmm. and I just knew that I wanted to take that and also make something that was sort of crushing in the process you know and something yeah. that was very visual and like I, I just miss I, I miss the idea that comedy can have scope and that it can totally. and that it can invest people you know mm -hmm. like comedy is kind of put in this simple box these mm -hmm. days so I just knew that that script I could take it and yeah. create something bigger you know, mm -hmm. create like a, a throwback to kind of like Goonies and Back to the Future and movies like that. Is it just me, or am I the only one who thinks that Nick Robinson, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. That he looks like Sean Astin from the Goonies? <laughs> I was looking at him on screen and I'm like, he must be related, but he's not. But did you see that in him at all when you cast you know, him? Because he was fantastic. I've never made that connection. Now that you bring it up, I can see it. Oh my I, god, I, it was yeah. just like, he's I, fantastic I, though. I, I, no, all the kids are phenomenal in it. Uh, Nick Robinson, who plays Joe, the lead, he uh, he really holds the movie down, yeah. and uh, they they all give just not only funny performances and, and not only heartfelt performances, but I think authentic performances to mm -hmm. what being a teenager is. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't cast twenty five year olds to play Thank you. eighteen. You know, <laughs> yeah. like I wanted like they they have pimples in this movie, and we <laughs> chose not to cover them up. You know, because that's what being a teenager is. Yeah, and when I first uh, when they've been living uh, you know out in the woods for a while. And you look at them. I thought at first they had like, like drawn on these beards, and I was like looking closer, and I'm like, this is actually the only hair that they can grow. Right. <laughs> these little kids. It showed their age, and the rest of the cast is fantastic. So you know, I was wondering, how did you go about like getting this ensemble together? Because it really makes the movie. I just so in the movie, like the kids are running away from, in theory, overbearing parents. But when you really look at it, these kids have great lives. Like oh. their parents love them. They're just being idiot teenagers, mm -hmm. you know, like with a little bit of perspective they'd realize, wow, I have a great situation right now. Uh, and so beyond Alison Brie in the movie, who's amazing in it, and she's sort of the, the anchor of like normalcy, mm -hmm. every other adult character is like a varying degree of batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, and so I just knew that I wanted to create an ensemble of not only comedic actors and improvisers, but just people who could ground them because mm -hmm. the tone is really tricky, you know, to, to slalom between almost slapstick comedy and trying to emotionally invest when you need someone who can really play that line and play that subtlety mm -hmm. so I just we, we tapped into like the improv and comedy world and a lot of my friends and we just tried to really build it up and put great people even mm -hmm. in small little roles so that it did create just an ensemble vibe well, yeah, and I think, you know, a moment that definitely stood out that I was I was so impressed with the balance that you found between the comedy and the drama is when, um, you know, Alison Brie is, is talking to her, to her dad and, and her boyfriend singing, and it's right. just so goofy. Yeah, right. But then the, sp 
but there is an element of sadness to the song and he says I'll never be able to get erection again with a straight face and then two seconds later he's like am I a bastard and it's and she says you know a, a bastard doesn't make people miserable around them or whatever she says and you know you're able to go back and forth between the two so quickly uh, I think that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie um, and to me I think that earnestness in comedy is most effective when you don't see it coming yeah uh, like you know I think back to even movies like Tommy Boy which uh, Tommy Boy is my favorite comedy which, of all time which is, which is amazing but like Chris Farley is so endearing in that movie that when his dad dies you, you're like oh well, I'm affected right now and so you like you you know I wanted to ease the audience in mm-hmm. get them invested in the characters and then slowly start pulling the rug out and you know that's a scene where I, I, I really honestly believe that if you can walk the line between comedy and drama and slalom between them it'll make the comedy funnier and the drama have mm-hmm. more weight and together they become more poignant that way mm-hmm. um, and you know that's a scene where if you can actually ping pong back and forth if you can have a really weird serious funny moment and then immediately hit that with something really dark and then go back to funny it just makes each of those hit more and resonate more yeah I like that the ping pong back and forth and and you do that in successful alcoholics too um, especially in the last scene where Lizzie Kaplan is like I can't do this anymore um, and I loved that uh, I definitely felt like successful alcoholics this film had some improv in it and I was curious which moments you know you kind of said you you guys are great go for it let's see what comes from improv or what was actually in the script I mean oh, you know the majority of that stuff is scripted there's definitely there's some entire scenes that are almost entirely what came out of the improv though you yeah know, like uh, I use the script as a base and Chris's words are just immaculate like the way he writes is so beautiful um, but I like to give the actors enough freedom to really mm-hmm. kind of like find beats and to, to see where else something will go and to see if there's something that's more earnest and real in the moment mm-hmm. uh, you know the entire scene uh, with the cops at the door uh, at the beginning yeah. is like a lot of that is pretty rift um, a lot of like that wanton delivery scene like a lot of that is just and I love the what's the the comedian that's in it Kamel, yeah. Kamel he's I've seen him perform live a lot and he opened the door and I was like it's Kamel yeah. uh, no there's a ton of like Hannibal Burris and Kumail and yeah. Mary Lynn and Thomas Middleditch and Mark Evan Jackson we have like an incredible every every supporting cast member is just like a great oh, comedian yeah. on their own mm-hmm. um but uh, yeah. Well, that was great. I feel like it definitely gave a spe- specific flavor to the film that you have these familiar, familiar comedic faces coming in right when your heart is being wrenched. Right. Then you have a funny scene. Um, so, all of the boys and you included everyone just seems so at home in that in that home in the woods. My question is, did you guys like sleep out there? Did you camp? Did you say no filming for three days? We're just going to be hooligans and we we had a really condensed shoot schedule I really wanted to I wanted to sleep in that house and we never we never got the chance to did you slide down the slide I did slide down the slide okay. once. Um, but uh, no you know it was just about creating like a war the, the idea like I didn't want the house to ever be too much of movie magic I wanted yeah. to feel like it was something that if kids actually had a couple hundred bucks and stole some stuff they could put together and then just crank that up a little bit so that there's mm-hmm. still that like kind of like John Hughes element to being like wow I know those kids and they, they like I relate to them but they're a little bit more interesting than I am you know like when you watch the breakfast club like those are all relatable archetypes mm-hmm. but they're like more uh, idealized you know what I mean and the right. house is sort of that same idea whose idea was it to have the porter potty door that was in uh, my in original script. concept art oh, yeah, yeah. not in the script oh so did you design the house like you were uh, that was yeah, a my, question my I had buddy, to uh, John Wilcox uh, he did a lot of the concept art and him and I and the production designer designed the house together that was my favorite it was part. In the script, it um, it was written as like a, a tent. There was like no description of the house, so that was like. But that was not. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I, I yeah. could tell that, uh, and I was curious to see kind of where it came from because it's such a specific house. <laughs> um, and I particularly love the scene at the end where he's skinning the rabbit. <laughs> you know, because he's it's suddenly like this fourteen year old kid right. who is going, oh, this is what I'm, what I'm, I, I'm say I am that I'm you know a man that lives well, in the woods. It's him becoming a man. So. Did Nick actually have to skin? Oh, I made him skin two rabbits. Yeah, I knew it. I was you like, know, he made him do yeah, it. He was he was down for it. Like Nick, Nick was a trooper, and that that was a weird day because that whole day was all the stuff of him kind of bottoming out. So it was just he was the only actor on set all day. That's great. And yeah, it was just us and him. And so and there was there was like very little dialogue that day too. It was just a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of sort of montage 
sketchy stuff and stuff of him hitting rock bottom. And uh, we all knew the rabbit team was coming, and uh, his mom had to go kind of off in a corner. And uh, the first one he butchered a little bit, didn't really do it properly. And the second one he skinned pretty beautifully. It was gross, but it's like all you know, waiting like fifth period. I know we're dissecting frogs. Like, do I stay or do I like skip out? Right. Um, so my show is all about kind of like focusing on where you started, and and we know you know with with your short and and where you're going, and you have this great team of people that's like so enthusiastic about your work, and I'm sure you guys have some stuff planned for the future, so what's up next for you? Honestly, uh, I have spent the last nine months finishing my TV show on Comedy Central, which was called Mashup. Mashup, okay. Yeah, okay. and uh, that aired, and then it was just making this movie as good as possible. So this is the first time in a long time that I've been able to breathe, so I want to... Uh, breathe and enjoy your Stella. I want to enjoy my Stella and, uh, and relax for a second, and then find another script that inspires me as much as this one did. Great. Well, thank you so much, and congrats on the film. So, uh, it doesn't have distribution yet, Not yet, but it will very soon. And um, this is Jordan Vogt-Roberts uh, with the uh, Toys House at Sundance 2013.